Today we're going to sheet that little roof I did yesterday and I promised I'd make a video today and I was thinking about not doing it because it's so windy. I don't know if you can tell because I've got a wind sock on my mic, but it's blowing pretty hard. That sheathing can act like a parachute, so it's pretty dangerous to try to do that. And i got to walk up and down this ladder behind me with pieces of sheathing because I work alone most time. So I'm going to get started and let's get this done safely, I hope. Alright, I'm up here on the roof and if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house and saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and ring the bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. Alright, so I'm going to try to attempt to explain how to cut the first piece of sheathing. It's kind of complicated, but you uh, can uh, understand it if you're used to construction. If this is your first time doing a construction project, it may be a little confusing. But here we go. All right, let me flip the camera around here. So this is where our first piece of sheathing is going, is right here in this first corner. And this is the most critical piece because it's going to set the tone for the rest of the whole roof. Because if it's off square a little bit, it's going to shift the whole thing off really unsquare. So you got to take your time on this first one. And it's kind of a pain with this offset, but what you got to do, you first measure up from this point here, 46 and a half and then make a mark because remember our fascia board's not on here yet so you gotta allow for that so 46 and a half make a mark then take your square your framing square and make a mark over here and then tack a nail from here and then pull your string line across that mark and then wherever hits on to the roof make a mark and then chalk the line and then that gives you your distance from here to the end of your overhang as your first measurement and that happens to be 64 and a half I wrote it down there because I can't remember everything all right and now you come down here take your square and I'm going to zoom up down here mark where your fascia board's going to hit and you can see it right there and then take your square from that edge and wherever it hits over here on the roof, that's going to be your target for the edge of your first sheathing. So if you look, I made a mark right here, right there. So we get the distance from here to here, which happens to be 24 and a half. I wrote that down as well. And then we know the edge is going to be straight. So all you got to do is take your 64 and a half and then your 24 and a half and then whatever that line is from here to here is going to be your first sheet so let's go cut it so set the sheet as if you're looking down on it like we were up on the roof so this would be that bottom 24 and a half inch and that'd be the 64 and a half inch up top so things are easier if you can visualize them as you do them at least it is for me so we pull over 24 and a half make a nice mark make it say it's visible Come up top, 64 and a half. All right, so now we got to get our chalk line and go from this point to that point. Little trick when you're working by yourself, just take a nail, tack it at this point. It gives you something to hook your chalk line on. Pull it tight and strike it. Take your nail out. All right, now we just take our saw and rip right on that line. Easiest thing to do is just take a board and slide under where you're gonna be cutting, but offset a little bit. And that way you have plenty of room to cut without cutting the sheeting underneath. All right, let's go up on the roof and see if it works. All right, here's that piece put down. You can see we hit nicely on our chalked line and our little uh, crow's foot we made over there. And uh, yeah, everything lined up really nice, nice and tight in the valley right there on the chalk line. Since our rafters are two foot apart, we got to use little clips that fit right here on the OSB that go like this. And then this creates an extra eighth inch, if not a little more, but I always figure about an eighth. But so that's why we measure up 48 and 1 8 make a mark you can see right there i put a little nail hook your chalk line to that pull it across chalk a line where it's going to hit and right here 
is where it's going to have to end because it actually broke out here somewhere so we got to stop right here on that line which ended up being 85 and 3 16 and then what you got to do from here since it's going to be breaking down this edge is measured down from this chalk line there's two of them because this first one got off a little bit but it was 24 and 3 8 from this chalk line down to where it intersects this valley and then you measure the distance from this point to the end of the first sheet and add about an eighth because of that clip like I was saying so that measurement 64 and a half so I'm going to go down there and cut that All right this sheets on um, this one no matter how much I measured and try to make sure it's right and since this is a YouTube channel I want to keep it real it didn't line up perfect I got it looking really good I didn't want to waste the sheet so what I had to do is it was standing up about an inch up over there down and nothing over here so I just had to uh, chalk a line and rip it down so it shifted down into place and it made this angle correct and everything else correct but sometimes you got to do stuff like this and I wanted to tell you I had to plumb this section up too I had to take this brace off and uh, I had to nail that and secure it so that's that sheet done and now the next thing is we got to fill in this little crack and it's pretty simple all you got to do is keep your straight line going with the top of the plywood there and then make a mark on the edge and then measure between here and there and then from here to here and that's going to be that square section for here it's going to look like a speed square when it's cut out of there all right we got that little piece in it looks really good and uh, something else I went ahead and did, I went ahead and did this little offset. It's only a three foot roof right here. And I also had to splice this because this was short. So I had to get this done before I ran the sheathing on this next part. So if you look here, all you got to do instead of pulling off this side, now we're going to step over to here, pull off this side. And that's for ridge vent, by the way. That's why it's open. So we pull from here and it takes us over here. So now we just do the same process we did on these bottom sheets on these sheets up here and man it is still windy as heck i was thinking about stopping but i was like i gotta get my viewers their content all right so we're going to finish this up and i'll show you the final product all right guys there's the final product the wind calmed down a little bit but it uh, still was pretty frustrating trying to get this done and here's this valley going down nice and pretty we got our ridge vent cut out so we gotta have a reason or a, gotta have a way to vent the shingles so they don't get too hot. And I always like to leave a nice peak, keep filled on the edge so water don't blow in. All right guys, I hope you liked the video. That was all I have for today. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.